there might be a bit of repetition. Uh, we have tried to make sure uh, we have different flavors for the same. So this aim of this examination was designed as an exit in training assessment to find competence so that uh, you can find out whether that person or whoever you are testing is able to practice as a day one DGH consultant in the generality of trauma and orthopedics. In simple terms, it is just to assess a safe and competent surgeon who is able to say, treat my child or treat my grandmother and so on. It's also just one of the requirements for the CCT or the Caesar through Article 14 or by a Caesar through CP mechanism. Now, for those who are joining from abroad and if you are going for the international uh, exam, the, the same talk is relevant uh, because we have the same kind of marking principles uh, and so on, and you're tested on the same level. And remember, examiners are the gatekeepers. This is Mr. Fazal Ali, a good friend of mine and colleague, and he is now heavily involved at the JCIE. Uh, and this exam is such that the general public and the profession can have confidence in the standard of care available when a GP refers a patient to an orthopedic consultant. And there are four prerequisites to success. You have to know the facts and your odds. You should know how to go about and face this exam and the structure of the exam, which Claire has already alluded to. You have to strongly believe that the exam is fair. Uh, I was an examiner for 10 years and now I've been an international examiner for more than three years. Uh, I can say very confidently that's an extremely fair exam. And again, to repeat, preparation with study groups probably will help you best to get a good result. My only advice which I tell all our trainees here is, do not prepare just to pass the exam. Because if you prepare like that, the probability of chance is you're going to fail. You have to excel at least in some areas of the common conditions because the exam, they are all common conditions which are, uh, which are asked in any subspecialty. So you have to score some sevens or eights because somewhere if it's a bad day, you might get a five or a four and you can make it up. So these extra points will increase your balance to offset a slightly below pass station. If you look at the pass rates of the exams in the last few years, section one is about 65 to 75% and section two is 60 to 70%. Of course, uh, they're categorized as based on NTN type one trainees who usually perform better, 75 to 90%, whereas the type twos are generally 25 to 35. So this success of results of pass rates does indicate that being in a training program significantly helps your chances of passing. Partly this may be because the preparation has started right in the beginning, as opposed to the last six months leading up to the exam. It also does indicate that it's still possible for you to pass even if you're not in a training program. And many of you in this country, you will be exposed to such training opportunities as there are other colleagues in your department. The written exam is quite fair because set by a committee and they're scrutinized by 10 examiners and it takes a long time to even set one question. Poorly performing questions are usually removed and they're looked closely by the panel and then either discarded or amended. Remember, these are negatively marked, which means that whatever you know, you can possibly mark uh, the right answers, but whatever you do not know, probably you can still give a guess. The pass mark is set at a standard setting meeting, or it's called the modified Angoff procedure, where the examiners have to do the same uh, written paper. And this pass mark is therefore set after the standard setting uh, meeting uh, of about 20 examiners. And therefore, there's no limit on how many can pass. That will be a percentage score cutoff, and whoever below that line will fail. Whereas the vivers and clinicals are designed to test higher and lateral order of thinking. The examiners basically want to discuss management of patients, both uh, uh, investigations and management, uh, just the way you do in grand rounds, or how you would see a patient in clinic and appropriately treat. So they expect these candidates to be able to advise on treatment on that specific patient. 
rather than give a list of treatment options. So if an examiner says, how are you going to treat? You should start the line saying, I would like to, or I would ask for these investigations. So you have to change the way you talk. And I should be your favorite word, depending on how the examiner has framed his question. So it's all about seeing whether you are a confident day one DJ consultant who can make proper decisions. And for the vivas, remember all the examiners meet the day before uh, and they do a standard setting of all the questions and images. And therefore, uh, uh, all the examiners are also the next day are assessed by assessors while they're examining you as well. And we all have a significant amount of training, including equality and diversity. Uh, and therefore, you should know that lots of things going on that behind the scenes to make sure that the exam is as fair. Over the years in the past, those examiners were deemed as unfair or too tough have been weeded out. So do remember that examiners are there to find out how much you know rather than how much you do not know. What about the clinicals? Examiners give you a chance to examine these patients. Of course, for the time being, they're all virtual, but I'm given to understand from May next year or November, there might be real patients, but the format may slightly change. There might be some uh, simulated uh, uh, sessions for short cases, and the intermediates will be with patients for about three cases. So things might change. The examiners are also assessed during the clinicals, and the pool of patients we have for the day are the same for all candidates. Some of these things, Claire, Ms. Carpenter has already uh, uh, said a few things. Family support, you should remember that inform them, time, timing of the exam must be good for the family as well and do involve them throughout and do not neglect them as well. Otherwise, you know, you will get burnt out even before the uh, part one. Having a revision group does help. When I went for the exam in 1997, we were five of us. I think four to five is the best. And you may have to save some money to spend on courses, which uh, Claire has kindly put up in her slides, books, hotel, nanny, and so on. Remember, this is a marathon, not a sprint. So you have to start very early and prepare very well. I think statistics is something which is important. I've just put this in as an addition, just as a reference for you uh, for statistics in orthopedic papers. Do not, do stay in a good hotel, but do not stay at the same hotel as the exam. On the day, do not keep on reciting things of ABC, ATLS and so on. Listen to the question carefully because everything is to answer to that question and they are very specific. And if there are props and so on, or there's an iPad, don't try to, try to touch or use your pencil uh, on an iPad or a computer. Dems, if we could hurry up, please. We're yeah. running out of time. I'll just finish, yeah. I would pass the clinical exam. They're looking to see that you've done particularly the examination test technique. They look at your, how respectful and gentle you are and all the other basic things you normally do in clinic. And do follow Apple's look, feel, and move. And always remember, all for lower limbs, stand your patient. And also look on the JCI for the marking system. It's all there from four to eight. And examiners are urged to use the whole spectrum of marks. And because there are 96 marking episodes, the pass mark is 576. So this is very important why you should get sevens and eights. And remember, the examiners fall back. Is this candidate suitable to be a day one consultant? So therefore, kindly look the part on that day. Thank you.